Hi, so my student life can now finally begin. Uh, because this is the first full day that I've got my uh, study laptop, uh, I had to take it away yesterday around 12 o'clock. Uh, the same day I took away a, the uh, calculus book and the university card for Tilburg. So now I have almost everything set for my data science study. So let's have a look at the laptop. And here it is, this is the HP ZBook Power G9. I may not mind this nice keyboard over here. This is a 17 inch screen, Intel Core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so these are pretty much the uh, correct specifications for a laptop that can be used a lot for things like uh, advanced mathematics and coding. Especially coding can be pretty surprising when it comes to the CPU workload because you are dealing uh, with uh, text file editing at first so it seems pretty simple however then you're going to actually compile and run your program especially if it's a very complex one and then it's when with a lower end system you're going to get into a bit of trouble because the compiling literally means turning the uh, code that is written into Python or JavaScript or C or anything into the want and VROs that will then be uh, executed by the processor, by the CPU and that is a very intensive task that's a good reason to get like a top of the line laptop. It doesn't have uh, like a dedicated graphics card. But that's not very necessary for uh, programming. Uh, there, uh, let's have a closer look at the screen itself. Got also a uh, screen, I think again 17 inches, it's pretty wide. Uh, especially when I compare it to the current use of the monitor. And rather there's something about privacy, they thought about it. This is literally a curtain in front of the webcam, so you can be certain it doesn't pick anything up if you don't want it to. And when you do want to use a webcam, it's simply a matter of sliding this tab. Uh, back when this wasn't a thing yet, people would use. Uh, like a bit of tape or a special curtain like thing on the webcam which could potentially damage your trackpad and keyboard if incorrectly installed or incorrect for the type of laptop. So it's pretty nice that they to build that in. Another thing they were very nice to build in is Bluetooth. Uh, this is the mate I currently use. And it's got like the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and Bluetooth. I've many told you about this, but that was at the time I used its Bluetooth mode in combination with my iPad. Now I use the Bluetooth mode in combination with a laptop. So I've got this little dongle that's still in my private PC, which will be replaced soon for a reason I'm going to talk about later on. The Bluetooth I've paired up with my laptop. So even though I'm keeping work and private pretty separate this way, it's still pretty seamless integration. So when I turn on the laptop, it's not just about the mouse, I can turn on the laptop and this goes into a extended dual monitor system. However, when I'm done with my studies, I just close the lid of the laptop and it goes into a sleep. Then I can turn on my personal PC over there and the screen automatically switches to the correct input. And right there you can see how I've pulled that part. This is a very similar system using two technologies with two devices. VGA and DVI. Uh, VGA is connected to the VGA port on the uh, PC, the desktop. And now the DVI port essentially is just early HDMI, so I could get in DVI to HDMI adapter and plug that right there into the laptop. 
Now the screen has an auto detect feature I'm going to demo shortly. However the USB ports are still only powered by the PC by the desktop and anything I plug here will connect to the desktop and not the laptop. Uh, so that's a bit weird. But I don't really use these USB ports on the side that often. But before I demo anything, the laptop wasn't alone. What's in this bag filled with some other tech goodies? So right there is a mouse. So this box contains a battery powered mate, only has a USB dongle. I don't think I'm going to use this very early, though it's pretty handy to have just in case the uh, mate I use right now breaks down or gets lost. I've also got the Ethernet cable at the Eindhoven University. They have, on many desks, they have dedicated Ethernet ports that I could connect my laptop to. If I took the laptop from the university, I tested it and the Ethernet cable didn't work. This was however only because there was no network connection in the room at all. In other words, wherever there's a network connection, the Ethernet cable should allow me to use my laptop and connect it to the internet pretty reliably. Of course, then there's the security cable. This is what's known as a Kensington. And they are practically mandatory when like using a laptop. So the idea is if you wrap it around the leg of a table or something like this, like there, and place the lock on the laptop. These actually used to be key locks, but nowadays even they are just uh, code locks sometimes instead. And I've got the insurance papers over here. This is just a little guide on what to do when the laptop gets wet or otherwise damaged. So now let's have a look at the seamless transition between desktop and laptop use. So the laptop is now powering on. It does take a long time again in Windows. I almost want to do a second video comparing the startup of Windows 11 against Linux Mint. And now I can. Again, this can take like ages to log on. Um, Ah, there we go. This is the dual monitor desktop. I can in fact confirm it is dual monitor, such as my to Bluetooth. And I'm going to open a file manager at the top screen. It literally just drags in place. If you can see, a little bit further away, maybe you can. There is the File Explorer window and the window of the laptop has nothing on it at the moment. So I'm just going to open, for example, the, the program that I've installed myself, Ultra VNC. Go to my Raspberry Pi. And right at the bottom screen, you can see the VLC player that the Raspberry Pi is running being shown by a VNC desktop. So, VNC is actually a very commonly used uh, remote desktop application. The other ones are Cisco AnyConnect and TeamViewer. Um, my university just so happened to use Cisco AnyConnect and my Raspberry Pi VNC because it's a free program uh, and a free system to use on your local network. So, right over here is where it's going to get really interesting. When I close the laptop window, the laptop goes to sleep. Obviously, I've configured it that way. It only goes to hibernation or not, I've got the charger plugged in. Because I've got the charger plugged in, I was able to change the settings so that when I close it, when it's not on the charger, it still goes to hibernation. However, when it's on the charger, it goes to sleep, which makes the transition even more seamless. So now, 
We're going to switch the mouse to 2.4 gigahertz. Right there. And the laptop is right now for me moving it. So let's correct it that. And now it's showing digital input power save. I'm going to turn on the computer. And as you can see, that is instant. And I'm not going to let you wait that long. Now Linux Mint is starting up on the desktop computer. And not only is it starting up, it does so pretty quickly. Now let's shut down both of the computers one by one. Four seconds before Linux Mint has completely shut down. And now we can open the laptop and switch the mouse back to the Bluetooth mode. After some waiting to load the desktop and authorise my account, I should be exactly where I left off. So this is pretty much perfect for break times. Now let's shut down the laptop itself. Sometimes the mouse can actually get stuck in Windows, making me really unable to do anything. There we go, that is the desktop connection closed. And I'm just going to hit the shutdown button. Now, I knew this takes forever. Sorry, I couldn't show you exactly how long it took for the laptop to shut down, but yesterday it took even longer because of automatic updates. Oh, yeah, and one thing I forgot to tell, but come to pretty much every laptop is this charging break. I've got it plugged into the power strip over here, so if I turn on the main power to the system, among other things, the laptop charger powers on to charge the laptop and to power the laptop, especially this is allowed for that little sleep hibernation trick that I've been playing. However, it has a dedicated place in the laptop bag over here so I could take you to university as well. Just to clarify, the private computer I've got uh, will probably be replaced as well because it can literally like freeze at random moments using any program and then I just turn it off and it wouldn't turn back on until I uh, take the case off and remove one stick of RAM and put it back in place. This has been pretty annoying and I've been worried about this happening during a render. But anyway, uh, see you next time and uh, maybe I'll do a proper startup comparison between that new computer and the study laptop to see which one really is the fastest to start up? But anyway, bye! I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.